This episode, I wanted to talk about mental preparation. It's pretty often that the guests that I've been speaking to have spoken about how they prepare for their sport, for their competition, for their training physically and their skills. But one thing I really wanted to touch on was mental preparation. And I've been making loads of notes throughout the week about this because it's something that crops up with the athletes that I work with and as much as getting yourself ready with your skills, your physical side is super effective, like it definitely is something that you should be doing, it's often in our performances the mental side of our game that fails us. And I wanted to touch on sort of what I did as an athlete, as a pro, um, some of the ways that I, as I was growing up, some of the things that I tried out, and then some of the things that you could potentially look at doing and how you might go about implementing it into your own life and your own sport uh, to, to improve your performance. I think of mental preparation as the ability to get yourself into as good a space as possible to execute on your skill. You want to be in the best possible place and mind space so that you can execute on your performance. And how you prepare physically... Um, skill practice is as important or the mind your mental preparation is as important as those elements so not forgetting it not neglecting it and really valuing it as something that is an equal element throughout your your practice and it it can be very easy to to just park it off because some of the ways in which you do it can seem a little bit out there but again, some of the best athletes I've ever spoken to, they've either subconsciously done it or they've made a real conscious effort to actually do this and, and they prepare themselves so mentally well, not only for getting ready for their performance that they've got coming up, but also being able to move on from past performances, to not live in, an, in a world of nerves and doubt and, and negative self-talk. They can move on very quickly from the performances that they've had and move forward and grow continuously and then to the point where they end up finding this brilliant routine that gets them in the best possible place for their sport and even their life it really does help if it doesn't have to just be a sport it could be a presentation that you've got to give some of the methods that I used I've used in multiple different elements of my own life not just sport I took them from sport um, but they've really helped me in preparing just for like public speaking and speaking in front of crowds and and not becoming overwhelmed by situations and then actually the ability to to grow and continuously get better. So for me, one of the methods that I used was visualization. Visualization is a powerful thing in my eyes. Um, I think the ability to see what you're about to do before you've actually done it can leave you in a better place than if it if it catches you off guard and, and you've you've kind of not done anything to to think about what sort of performance you got coming up. I remember seeing a study at the University of Chicago where they took a group of basketball players and they split them into three groups. Uh, the first group were for for thirty days they were going to practice for an hour physically taking free throws. The other group for 30 days were going to practice visualizing taking those free throws, but not actually doing it. And the third group were just not going to do any practice whatsoever. The first group, after they retested them after that 30 days, had improved 24%. But the group that had visualized and not taken any free throws, not touched a single basketball, had improved 23%. They only had there was only one percent difference between those who had physically taken done the action and those who hadn't, and the group who hadn't done any training they didn't improve just exactly as they 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 predicted. So even in that study shows the power of the mind on actually the action that you're trying to produce by being able to see it is just as effective as actually doing it yourself. And I remember when I read, first read this. I reckon I'd realized that I was visualizing my performances beforehand anyway, but then it really, when I became consciously aware of it, I made an effort to add this in and really made an effort to be aware of the visualization that I was doing. So one of the big parts of me getting ready for a match, a competition coming up, was to prepare and visualize, first off, the place where I was going to be doing it. If I could see the place where I was going to be doing it, 
even if I'd never been there before, whether I'd seen it on uh, in a picture or on TV, actually visualizing myself standing there and going and performing my skill. What are the things that I would be seeing in the morning? What would I see when I'm walking out onto the field? What would I see while I'm out there? Who am I going to be coming up against? And that, so physically putting myself in that position and seeing myself do the skill um, and the, the performance that I wanted to be putting in. So then when I went into training, I would literally take my my practice, my skill practice, and move it into this visualization. I would make sure that my skills were nailed on, so I'd actually physically practiced the skill that I was trying to perform. That was a big element of my visualization, and and it was a part that added into. They All of these different elements, they kind of interlink, and they become a part of your mental preparation and your full preparation. If you think of preparation as a as an umbrella underneath it there are multiple different things that are going on um, but what I'm kind of talking about is that we we focus on the physical and the skill and then we kind of forget the mental side of it as well so they're all interlinked but you need to look after them equally so for me getting my body ready first off was a big part of it making sure I practiced my skills and I was nailed on my skills got me in a really confident place but then if I didn't visualize actually me being and being in the the place where I was going to be doing the performance and I didn't actually see myself doing it, that all kind of fell apart because I felt when I got to the actual game, uh, I didn't feel ready. I felt like I'd never been here before um, and it didn't even matter how much how much practice I'd done, it was kind of taking me back and, it, it, and I was left kind of figuring out myself. Whereas I, whether or rightly or wrongly, I always felt if I visualized being there, I was kind of one step ahead. I was always always prepared for anything that would potentially go right or wrong. And also, it really helped with nerves. Nerves is a, a big one for athletes and performance anxiety is a, is a real thing and it's a natural thing in my opinion. I think if you're not anxious about your performance, you probably don't care. So understanding that nerves are going to happen that was the the best bit of advice I got for nerves was to to just accept them I remember speaking to one of our psychologists and him saying uh, and me saying to him I've got this game coming up but I'm really really nervous um what shall I do he said just accept them you are going to be nervous see it as excitement and the way I reframed that was using it as excitement I was actually really excited to show people what I could do Rather than this fear of failure that I had sort of brewing in my mind, I was then reenacting or not reenacting. I was I was starting to again visualize showing people what I could do. I was really proud of being able to um, kind of turn around to the crowd and be like, "Right, watch this." And right, it, whether whether it worked or not, whether I had a good game or bad game, it put me in the best possible place to perform I gave myself the best possible chance so when I came off the field I hoped that I'd given myself the best possible chance to perform and I didn't come off thinking oh, I, I wish I, I wish I'd done this I wish I hadn't done that but all of this that I'm talking about was something that I ended up getting way down the line before then it was it was really trial and error I was trying to find a routine. Some of the most experienced athletes I've met and I've known, they the ones that perform the most consistently, they have this consistent routine in what they do. They prepare physically, um, their skill practices is consistent and then their mental preparation is consistent. And then it's no wonder that their performances are consistent. Yes, they have ups and downs, but those ups and downs are minimal. And it's like this very even wave. They're not big highs and big lows. They're very minimal changes in their highs and lows. And they're able to move on from the last performance pretty quickly onto their next performance. And that comes from experience. Experience is one part of it, but also they've tried loads of different things, but they've figured out what did work, what didn't work so well, and then what they're going to do the next time they go out and do it ability to actually park a performance and move on from a past performance has put them in a better place because they haven't let dragged it with them onto the next performance where they're still dwelling on it and they're not actually concentrating on what they're doing in the here and now so figuring out what you potentially can do to prepare yourself mentally the best way that could again be a part of all of those different facets it could be 
preparing physically it could be preparing your skill but making sure that all of that is a part of your mental preparation and you're really taking some time to get ready for your he- for where you're going to be mentally on that day another point to make is that this is not a um it's not set in stone this isn't set in stone this can be something that fluid changes quite often and it's a fluid environment like i said trying out different things as you're you're trying to figure out what your routines are um what your strategies are is is a something that you should be exploring but once you've found what tends to work for you then try to stick with it try to see that it's consistent and that that can look multiple different ways for you it might be relaxing the day before it might i i had i played with with athletes who needed before the game they needed to physically do the action um of their skill over and over and over again to to really tick it off and feel like they meticulously did it i had other athletes who would just literally lie on a sofa and not do anything and listen to music and that was the thing that got them into their their best headspace So there's no right or wrong. There's just what is good for you, what's bad for you. The only way you're ever going to know what is the right or wrong is to be able to debrief yourself and assess after your performance. Did you did you either move away from what you were doing well, like what your performance, what your mental preparation was? Did you did you consistently do it, or did you do something else, and then that resulted in a poor performance? flip it around did you do your mental preparation did it result in a good performance so then that's something to take on for the next time but understanding that it hasn't got to look like everyone else anyone else's yours is totally individual and there's no again right or wrong way of doing this it's just what is is best suited for you having a look at the barriers that you might face um i would visualize sort of anything that potentially could go wrong for me on the day I find it really interesting looking at Olympic athletes who prepare in a four-year cycle for their psychologists. I've heard of psychologists really throwing them in their training um, to get them to mentally prepare for the unknown. So there could be something that happens on the day that could get in the way of your preparation. Do you have ways in which you can brush that aside or deal with it and then still put in a good performance? Uh, I know there's been performances in my own life where I've had something happen on the day and it's thrown me off. Um, But having that routine, having that mental preparation, even something that can happen very, very quickly, it hasn't got to be, your preparation can happen days in advance before your performance, or it can literally happen minutes before your performance. Like whatever it is, the ability to turn yourself on for your sport, your performance very, very quickly is a great skill to have And especially in moments where there could be chaos or something's changing and you need to get yourself into the best possible place to to perform. So knowing, understanding what potential barriers could be coming your way is something you should be aware of and something that you should also be planning to have a strategy around of how to deal with it. I use breath work as a real simple one for me. If I have a moment in a game that is chaotic or if I have a moment in my life that is chaotic to make the best possible decision to perform at my best, whatever that is, I take a breath. So I stop, I take a deep breath in through the nose, I feel the air coming in through my nose, I take a slow exhale, I allow my body to relax, I take this breath in through my belly because I know that diaphragmatic breathing allows the body and the mind to relax but it also brings an element of mindfulness into what I'm doing it brings the awareness into my breathing so it does take away whatever chaos is going on in my mind and it brings it back to the here and now so that I'm able to make the best possible decision moving forward so to simply stop what you're doing reset and then move forward is a form of mental preparation in itself in these kind of little micro moments that may be going on whether it's in your sport on the day um, and in your everyday life as well so little things that you can do to to navigate these stressful situations i'd also made a note on being able to speak to others so one of the big valuable things i found and i've seen is those that are willing to open up about not only just their 
their mental preparation, but actually everything in their sport. Those that are willing to open up and ask questions of their teammates, their coaches, their friends can really help silence sort of the doubts, the nerves and make you um, a little bit more confident in what you do. So sharing how you feel, what it is you're doing, asking questions of what works for them can really help fine tune what you're doing uh, and maybe even reaffirm what you're doing. So you can tell them what you feel is, is working for you and especially if you're working in a team environment, I think it's super important that each player understands what the other's best prep looks like. So if I have a teammate and I understand what his preparation looks like, if I don't see him doing that, I can go and address it with him and I can go and ask him what's going on. Is there something going on? Like how can, how can we get you in the best possible headspace? And you can kind of, you can you can start to, again, work as a team as a team sport you're going to need each other so making sure you understand how each person in your team gets into that best possible headspace to perform their skill and to perform their tasks and and put in the best performance for not only themselves but for the team should be an something that you as a teammate can have on on you and you can hold each other accountable so again if if they are doing it well if they're preparing brilliantly then you know they're going to be in the best possible place and you can maybe tell them that you can reaffirm it you can give them that positive reinforcement um, but it is a really effective tool to know that if your teammates are not in the best possible place then you can address it you can maybe pull them to one side and especially if if you've told someone about how you prepare and you feel like they they know what things you're you're looking to do then they can actually come to you and maybe help you out and get you in the best possible place. Sometimes it's it's pretty hard to do it yourself. And so having someone else with you, having a coach, having a teammate, a friend, help you get into the best possible place can be really helpful. But that can't start until you tell them what it is that gets you there. So everything I've been speaking about are just some really simple things that you can do, whether it's visualizing your performance, taking a breath, finding that routine, speaking to others so that they understand what your routine is and really exploring it, especially if you're on your way to trying to achieve your goals within your sport, um, then looking to to find out what works best for you. And it, and don't judge it. You don't have to think that it's a, uh, it has to look or sound a certain way. There, whatever it is, if the result is that it puts you in the best possible place to perform and it's working, then it's it's definitely worth holding on to and continuing.